we're going to go through the process of linearizing a momentum balance. We have a momentum balance around this vehicle where we have the thrust, which is going to be our gas pedal, U. And we also have this uh, thrust force parameter, you know, as you have 0 to 100% gas pedal, that translates into a force going forward, so that F sub P is the uh, force that is uh, pushing this automobile forward. So I'm just going to write that here. Okay, the thing that is trying to slow it down is the drag, and so this, here's our drag term right here. One half times rho, the density, times the cross-sectional area, times this drag coefficient, C sub D, times the velocity squared. So this one depends on, it's always opposite in the direction that we're moving. So we're going to assume that we're moving forward, and this is going to be one half rho A, C sub D, times velocity squared. And then we have the accumulation of momentum right here. It's uh, mass times acceleration. And that's going to determine how fast the uh, car is going to be going. So we have this uh, gas pedal here as we step it up to, let's say, 50%, for example. Um, then we're going to see a velocity response. And so we want to um, be able to linearize this and then be able to compare it with the uh, nonlinear solution. So first of all, to linearize it, uh, if you uh, take this equation, and what we're going to do is um, go ahead and move everything uh, not associated with the derivative onto the right-hand side. So I'm going to put the mass over there. And I'll just say u. It is u of time. Uh, but I'll go ahead and just leave that as u, and then velocity squared, and divided by mass. Okay, so here's my differential equation in what's called a semi-explicit form because I have everything else on the right-hand side and just the derivative on the left-hand side. So let's go ahead and apply our linearization formula. Um, we're going to take this um, and then take the partial derivative with respect to um, u and then v. And don't forget about the initial term here, u and v. Those are our initial values point at which we're linearizing about. And then we'll take the partial with respect to u, plug in u equals u naught, and velocity equals velocity naught, and have u minus u naught. Okay, then also add the partial derivative with respect to v, and again plug in the uh, linearization points. Okay, so there's our um, linearization formula. If we choose steady state conditions, for our linearization points, then the velocity with respect to time is going to be equal to zero. And if I plug in u naught here and v naught here, then at steady state, that equals zero, and so this equals a zero. Okay, so we're going to um, just get rid of that first term. A lot of times we can if we just choose steady state points for our linearization. Okay, and then let's calculate this first partial derivative right here. That's just going to be uh, F sub P over M. We need to plug in U naught and V naught, but we, those aren't in that expression. Okay, and then we have uh, U minus U naught. And then I'm going to do it uh, here as well. And so this one um, is going to be, it is going to include velocity in there. And so that's going to cancel the 1 half, um, and then I'm going to have negative rho a c sub d over m times v, and I'll plug in my v naught, and then multiply this by um, this one. I'm going to multiply by v minus v naught. Okay, so here is my linearized expression. If I put it into deviation variable form, then it's going to be v prime, okay, dt, d, v prime dt, that's my deviation variable, okay, v prime equals v minus v naught, and u prime equals u minus u naught, I just made that substitution, and um, f sub p over m, I'm actually just going to call this uh, alpha times u prime plus, okay, so this is going to be alpha 
and all of this is going to be beta, beta times v prime. So there is my linearized expression. So now what I need to do is just come up with these values. So I have what is, you know, I got to calculate alpha and beta. So let's go ahead and calculate that. We have uh, f of f sub p over m equals alpha. And then beta, I need to be able to calculate uh, a v naught value. I was given in the problem statement. Um, if you come to the course website, uh, here's the problem statement with all of the information about this. Just come to assignments. And this one is going to be the linear simulation assignment. So here's our automobile. And um, you know, if you need help on this, chances are that uh, you, you need this help uh, if you're watching this video. And so you just scroll down and you can see some of this uh, derivation here. And uh, the steady state velocity, we're going to calculate that. We're just going to plug in 0 for our uh, differential term right here and then solve for the steady state velocity. There you can see it's uh, 40.406, so about 40.4 meters per second. So let's just go ahead and use that for our steady state velocity, 40.4 meters per second. And our um, u-naught, okay, that's gonna be equal to v-naught. And our u-naught, that was given in the problem statement. Um, Let's see, let me go back there and just look at that. Okay, that's 40, uh, that was 40% 40 um, that we were given. Uh, we want to calculate this at, um, let me see, oh, there it is. Steady state conditions when the gas pedal is maintained at 40%. So u naught was gonna be 40%. Uh, percent. Okay, and then uh, we have the beta value that you saw up there. It's going to be negative rho a c sub d over m uh, v naught. Okay, so we have our linearized expression now. And what we want to do next is uh, go ahead and simulate this, the nonlinear uh, the nonlinear um, step with the uh, linear one, and just see how good of an approximation uh, we've come up with with our linearized expression. So if you also come back here to the solution help, Okay, um, we have uh, a script here that you can download uh, just for the nonlinear model simulation. And uh, this one uh, actually goes to 50% gas pedal. So you need to change that to go to just 40% um, if, you, if you want to, or you can leave it at, at 50%. Um, and then you see the velocity uh, response. And so here is just a starting script. If you come down here to get code, uh, it'll show it to you in text format so you can copy it um, into your script. Okay, so let's go ahead and just open that up and then let's try to implement this uh, linear uh, model as well and see. Um, okay, so I have this, uh, the nonlinear one right here, and I'm going to create a uh, linear uh, sol solution as well. Okay, I'm just going to have the same inputs as the nonlinear model. This uh, nonlinear model is defined in terms of the velocity, the time. Okay, those are the two required arguments. And then we have the input U, which is our gas pedal, and then finally the load. Okay, so this is going to be our uh, linearized expression. We're going to take um, and just, I'm just going to plug in a lot of my linearization uh, solutions in here. So my alpha is going to be equal to um, F sub P, okay, divided by, and then I have my mass. So my mass is going to be my, my mass of my vehicle plus the load in my car, okay, so the passenger load. And then my beta uh, value, that one is going to be just a little bit more complicated, minus rho times a times c sub d times velocity steady state um, and then that's going to be divided by the total load the total mass is, is going to be m plus the load okay and then I'm going to have my um, dv dt and that is going to be equal to alpha 
uh, times, and then this is going to be u minus u steady state plus uh, beta times, and this is going to be uh, v minus v steady state. Okay, and then I'm going to return um, dv dt. So I need all of these parameters that I have up here. And let me just go ahead and copy those out so I can use them in either one. Okay, there's my um, mass of my vehicle, my F sub P, my cross-sectional area, my density, and my drag coefficient. I just need to add my steady state condition. So U steady state is going to be equal to 40. And that is a uh, gas pedal percent. And there we go. And then velocity, steady state, we calculate that as 40.4. And that is meters per second. Okay, and uh, if I have an error, I'll, uh, I'll see that and then fix it. Okay, but this is my uh, linear function right here. It's just going to return the dvdt for this linearized expression. And then I'm going to come down here. I set up my time uh, steps. Um, you know, if I wanted to change my step up, to 40, let's say, um, you know, just up to the steady state condition. I could do that there. There's my load, my passenger load. That'd be uh, you know passengers plus cargo, and then my initial condition is here, and that's going to be for both of them. And then let's just go ahead and um, include for storing the results. I'll do VSL, V storage for linear and go ahead and do zeros for number of time steps. So we're just going to go 61 time steps, or 60 time steps, uh, 61 points, um, for a final time of 60. Okay, and then uh, I need to store uh, the, uh, you know what, let me do this. I'm going to just copy this whole thing. I'll simulate the nonlinear model, and then I'll also simulate the linear model in a separate loop but just plugging in the linear one instead of the nonlinear one and just storing the linear there instead of the nonlinear. Okay, and let's see. Okay, um, yeah, this looks, uh, this looks okay. Um, Okay, I can actually take these off. This was um, just clipping, um, you know, if you get outside the bounds. Uh, the negative 50 is there just for the braking. Uh, you really don't need that in this case until we start developing a controller. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add the uh, linear one. Okay, and let's change the color of that to maybe a black uh, dashed line. And so we'll do velocity nonlinear. And then, oh, no, I don't want that there. I'll do that in the uh, legend. I'm actually just going to delete that for the velocity. And then just add a label to each of these. OK, just make it a little bit easier to keep track of those. And then I'll label this one as linear. And then when I uh, create my legend, it's automatically going to assign those labels to those trends. So I can do it the other way if I just say legend and then I put in the legend values there as a list. Okay, let's go ahead and try this and simulate it, see if it pops up with the solution. Hmm, okay, I've got something going on here. Okay, linear versus nonlinear. Let's see if we can try to debug this. Um, I actually don't mind it when I get errors in it. Um, you know, the troubleshooting I think is is valuable to go through. And let's see what I have. Uh, U was equal to my step. Hmm. Okay. I need to figure out what something with the U value that's coming in there and how it's being processed by this uh, linear model right here. Okay, there's my linear model. And I just need to figure out what's going on with that kind of big step right at the beginning. Um, and so 
Okay, so my step goes from uh, zeros to 40 at that point. Um, I have plugged in zeros right here. Let's just go down to my linear simulation and check this out. Um, oh, you know what? I didn't reset my initial condition. That's what it was. It went from one to the other um, and just forgot to reset that initial condition. So it's using the V-naught uh, from the prior one. Okay, let me do that. Reset the initial condition and simulate it again. Okay, so there I have it. Um, you do see a little bit, um, <clears throat> you know, it comes up a little bit here. That's just because it uh, you didn't start at the, the uh, the steady state conditions are at 40, and so there's a little bit of a linearization here uh, just initially. Okay, so you can see that it uh, tracks up and then uh, comes up to the, uh, you know, to this steady state condition that they're going to agree very well right here. Okay, so there's the linear versus the nonlinear solution for this uh, automobile, and um, We've calculated the, you know, we did the linearization, we calculated the steady state um, points, and then we, um, you know, also calculate this linear versus nonlinear response. So you can also do some things like, let's say we want to just change the load of the passengers. Let's say we have a lot of people in there and a lot of cargo, and you can run it again and see the difference between these two. Okay, so. Uh, the car just accelerates a lot slower, so you might have to go further out to see where it's going to steady out. Okay, you can also, um, what we'll do later is our U value will be, term be determined by a, a, a PID controller. And so you can actually, um, you know, this PID controller will actually determine the value of U. Um, one of the things I want to do though is um, you know I have my alpha and beta values here. Let me just go ahead and calculate those and print them. And I'll just show you something that we're going to be covering in the future. Okay, so you're going to get uh, just a little bit extra here. Um, let me just say alpha and beta. Um, so this is an alternate way to come up with this linear model that I'm going to show you here. This one is uh, alpha and beta. i got to get all these parameters out of here too because they're inside that uh, function. Okay, there's alpha and beta. And I'll just go ahead and copy this down here. So I just want to show you an alternate way of coming up with these uh, linear model, but do it uh, graphically instead. See if I can unindent this. Um, I never know how what the shortcut is for that. Um, I'll try to unindent a block here. Okay, so dedent region. Oh, there it is. Okay, so there's a little shortcut, control plus left bracket to uh, at least an ideally. Okay, and then I'm gonna print uh, alpha, alpha and print uh, beta. Okay, let me run this again. Okay, so I have my alpha and beta values there. And uh, an interesting thing is, okay, so this is gonna be 0 0.02 and negative 0 0.04 uh, for my alpha and my beta. Okay, 0 0.02 and beta equals negative 0 0.04. Now I can also put this into something called a, uh, a linear, um, this is gonna be a, a linear uh, differential equation. And I can put this into uh, an alternate form where it looks like uh, this, where I have uh, tau times dx dt equals negative x plus k times u. And this is a time constant and this is a gain. And so I'm just gonna rearrange this equation into that form. So if I divide by, uh, let's see, negative beta, then uh, I have negative one over beta times dv dt equals negative velocity plus alpha, um, let's see, I'm gonna have to do minus alpha divided by beta times u, okay? 
So there is my, um, this is in uh, form where I can identify the time constant. So tau equals negative one over beta. And then my gain, my gain is going to be equal to negative alpha over beta. So in this case, um, my tau value is going to be one is, is uh, tau is going to be, oops, there we go, um, is going to be negative. So that's going to be one divided by 0 0.04. And my gain is going to be equal to 0 0.02 divided by 0.04. Okay, so um, this one is going to be about 0 0.5. And then if I, uh, let me calculate this other one. Okay, and that's just going to be 1 divided by uh, 0 0.04. 1 divided by 0 0.04. And that's 25. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so here we have 25 and point, uh, point 0.5. And uh, so that's equal to roughly my time constant. So this is about how long it's going to take to get 63.2% of the way to steady state. And then this is going to, this gain here is going to be, um, you know, a delta velocity over delta gas pedal. So let's go back to my uh, plot that I had originally and see if we can kind of get those out graphically as well. Okay, so to get 63% of the way to steady state. So steady state is uh, right here, about 45 or so. 63%, I'm just gonna draw that in graphically. And I can see that that took about, um, Let's see, that is, that looks about to be 18 or so, 18 seconds. Okay, and then from my uh, linearization here, oops, let me go down. Okay, it was about 25 seconds from that linearization, linearizing the nonlinear model. But graphically, it showed that it took about um, 18 to 20 seconds to get about 63% of the way there. Let's go back up here to my uh, gain. Um, so it says that if I push my gas pedal down uh, 40%, uh, or in this case 50%, I should have a change of about 25. So it says that my, uh, just doing the linearization here, I would do, uh, let me just sketch that a little bit differently. There I go. So that would be my response about right here from linearizing it from first principles. And then if I just did it graphically, I would come up with something that's tau dv dt equals negative v plus k times u. And in this case, I had a, um, a gain graphically of delta v over delta u of 50 divided by, uh, oh no, I gotta do 45 divided by 50, okay. So I had about a change of 50 in the input um, with a 45 change in the response. And then this uh, just graphically here was about 25 seconds. So I came up with a very similar solution from linearizing it from uh, you know, the momentum balance as I did just uh, getting the linear model graphically. And we'll show some more about how to do that in, uh, in the fitting. Okay, so FOPDT graphical fit, you can see a little bit more on how to do that. So there's multiple ways to obtain these models. The first way that I showed was linearizing a nonlinear differential equation. The other one is just to look at the data uh, from a step test and be able to pick out the time constant and the gain.